Good morning, everybody. Today is Monday, October 9th. Uh, today in class, we um, I had the kids take out their flashcards, and I graded those. Um, so when you come back, please make sure that you show me your flashcards for plate motion. Remember, there should be 23 vocabulary and key concepts. Um, and this, this is just a, a completion grade, so um, I will grade what you have finished. Uh, we went over their pre-unit assessments. I handed back scientific arguments. And we're going to begin with the plate motion. Remember, we're in a new unit. It's plate motion 1.2. And I want to show you something. Later on in the video, in this summary, I'm going to talk about a video that I showed in class. And I want to show you where you can find it. So this is our table of contents. Remember, we're in a new table or we're in a new unit called plate motion. So go ahead and open that. And then at this front lesson, this is like the, it would be like if this was in a textbook, this would be the first page of the new unit um, plate motion. You have a unit overview and you have the chapters. So if you would go into chapter one, lesson two, you see this. Now, my screen looks different than yours, but you have to be in a lesson. So this is lesson 1.2. And when you scroll down, you should see a big title here. Um, and it says digital resources. Again, yours looks different than mine because this is the teacher view. But your digital resources, you can see anything that um, is supposed to be in the actual Amplify in your lessons but also things that I show you like, like videos. So if you would see down here, this third one right here, the classroom video 1.2, this is the video that I'm going to show today and um, that I showed in class today. And I'm not going to show it to you. I'll reference it and have you come back here to your digital resources. I've tried to show it in a summary video in the past and it just gets messed up because the, the feedback with the video playing within a video that's being recorded, it just gets kind of messed up. So remember to come back to digital resources and you'll be watching this classroom video right here, 1.2. All right, let's go ahead and get into it. So we're starting out with our new unit, lesson 1.1 in plate motion. And this lesson is focusing on using fossils to understand earth. We're understanding specifically um, the outer layer of Earth, or what we have already learned is called the geosphere. All right, so we all started with a warm-up, and I just had the kids talk to me. We didn't, I didn't have them write anything down, just about what they already know about fossils. And some kids talked to me about fossils that they've collected. Some have talked about fossils that they've seen, um, and just what those things are, what fossils aren't, what aren't fossils, um, and just we came to the conclusion that a fossil is leftover from a living organism, things that are not living or were never living like rocks, they don't make fossils. Um, and a fossil can be uh, an imprint, like a footprint, or it can be actual uh, bone. Um, more, more than often, though, we do see that fossils, especially like if you're talking about the fossils of a leaf, like the one down on the lower right there in that picture, the leaves tend to uh, disintegrate over a period of time. And so this fossil then is the indentation of the leaf in the soft matter. It's usually like a, like maybe a landslide or um, some kind of soft sediment has gone on top of things. And, um, and has created this perfect place to make an imprint. And then over time, the soft tissue of the fern or the fish above, that's going to go away. It's going to decompose. But then what's left behind is the imprint that was there um, when, that, when that mud or other uh, sediment went on top of it. So fossils are like time capsules. Scientists use fossils to better understand what Earth was like when that fossil formed thousands or even millions of years ago. Now, this is the video I want you to watch. In the video, 
we're going to listen to this guy. His name is Dr. Wilson. He is a, um, uh, what is he? He's a real life scientist who investigates fossils. So he's a paleontologist basically. Um, and fascinating video, really interesting. I've got two answers or two questions. Sorry. I've got two questions for you to, to think about, um, as you're watching the video and try and pull answers from those questions. The first one says, what kind of evidence does Dr. Wilson use in his research? So what is he looking for that he can bring back and say, I'm using this as evidence to answer a question that I have based on whatever it is that he's researching. And then number two, how does his research then help us learn about the geologic history of earth? How does his research help us learn about the outer layer of earth or the history of the outer layer of earth? So right now is the time where I want you to pause this video, go back to Amplify and play the video about this very interesting man and his job is a uh, researcher. Okay, so what kind of evidence does he use in his research? He uses fossil evidence. And how does his research help us learn about the geologic history of Earth? Well, I mean, there's, there's a lot. Uh, we talked again about, like, what was the Earth like at different points of time in history? And how has it changed over time? That was the big kind of takeaway from that. The Earth actually does change the geosphere changes over time and through fossil records we can note the changes that have taken place and then that helps us kind of piece together uh, pieces of like bits of information that nobody was around to get and and that helps us understand about the geologic history of earth so our unit question is why are fossils of species that once lived together found in different locations on earth now this is fascinating, you guys. I love this. We have an email. Uh, you all are still geologists, student geologists, and we received an email from Dr. Bayard Moraga. He is the lead curator of a museum of West Namibia. And a curator is uh, a person that puts together displays in a museum. And so he's coming to you for help. And he says, we're lucky to have a fossil specimen of Mesosaurus to display in our museum. And you can see the fossil specimen right there to the right. The fossil remains of this organism were found in hard, solid rock near our museum in southwestern Africa. Fossils of Mesosaurus that originally lived at the same time and in the same place are also found thousands of kilometers away across the Atlantic Ocean on the eastern coast of South America. So this is a this is a quizzical kind of what's going on here. If we've got fossils that originated in Africa, right? Why are those fossils of these organisms that lived in Africa, why are they found way over in the ground in South America? He says, this is puzzling because this ancient animal could not swim very far. So why are Mesosaurus fossils found in South America and Africa, continents that are now thousands of kilometers and an ocean apart? We're building an exhibit to answer this question for our museum visitors, and we need your help to do so. So that's our job, this, this unit. We are student geologists, and we're trying to figure out why these Mesosaurus fossils are found on two different continents, thousands of kilometers and an ocean apart. So that's just what I said. <laughs> so let's think about uh, what he's asking. We're going to put on our geologist caps and we're going to think about this. So we've got fossils in Africa and we've got the same fossils in South America. And I'm on, I want you to think about this. Why would these fossils be so far apart? It's, it's not like, I want to make sure you're understanding. Mesosaurus lived in one place at one time. And then something happened in the earth where now we've got fossils of Mesosaurus. But these fossils are found on two different continents. How can that be? 
And so we just kind of took some time in class to talk about maybe what could have happened. And some things that kids were talking about were, well, maybe they really did swim that far. And maybe they, you know, were picking up, picked up by birds. And maybe they were, the birds migrated and they fell. And maybe, you know, they were eaten by something. And those fossils then, you know, were part of, not to put it indelicately, but maybe they got pooped out and those fossils are now there in South America. Um, so we just had lots of just brainstorming activities, just lots of, of thoughts. And this is not about finding out the right answer now. This is just what scientists do. They, we sit around and we say, okay, what are the possibilities? What could happen? What, what sounds logical? And then we start going down the path that we want you know, we're going to pick one idea and we're going to keep working at it until we get an answer. So our chapter one question is, if we're looking at South America and we're looking at Africa, we need to figure out how was, how was the geosphere different back then? Was it different? Um, were there any changes that had been made? Uh, or was South Africa and so, I'm sorry, was Africa and South America always that far apart? So our chapter one question is, what is the geosphere like where Mesosaurus fossils are found? And I want to remind you, what does geosphere mean? Remember, geosphere is the outer layer of Earth. So what this question is asking is, what is the outer layer of Earth like where Mesosaurus fossils are found? What is the outer layer of Earth like in Africa and in South America. So lastly, we just ended up with this homework. It is a very short article uh, called The Ancient Mesosaurus. I want you to learn a little bit about Mesosaurus by reading and annotating the short article. It is due on Tuesday. It's legit, these two paragraphs, and that's it. I also want you to read and annotate the captions underneath the, the images because those are also very important. All right, that's it for today. I hope to see you tomorrow.